All right, so negative hex, this will be fairly straightforward. A uh, little joke there in the front. Uh, so if you are asked to express uh, negative 20 um, as an unsigned char, so that just means eight bits, uh, using hex, how would you do it? Um, first I'll say that if you want eight bits with hex, that's gonna be two characters. So I know the answer is gonna be something X and then two characters. Um, so how do you get negative 20 into negative into hex? Um, you do not put a negative sign out front. That's not how it works. Um, the best way to think about it is you have to convert it to binary first, and then you know how to convert binary to hex. And so that's how this works. Um, so negative 20, it's the same number we had before, uh, but we'll just go ahead and do it again. Um, so kind of to write it out, there's 20. Uh, so if I wanted uh, negative 20, uh, I would do the flip it game. So I hit that one, and then I change the rest. So there is negative 20. Um, and so then the only thing I need to do to convert it into uh, hex is to take the first chunk and the second chunk. Uh, of course, I picked hard ones. Um, so this is the symbol E, uh, and then that one is the symbol C, I believe. Uh, I have to think it over. That's 12. B is 11. Yeah, C. Um, so the answer to this question is uh, quite simply 0xec. So if you're ever asked to convert from decimal to hex and it's a negative, you kind of have to go via binary, right? So that's not too bad. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. If you wanted to uh, represent it as a long or an int, um, those leading ones just become f's. Um, so as an int, it would be f, f, e, c. Um, and as a long, it would be f, 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 e, c. Still have to do the reverse. Uh, so hex uh, to decimal. Uh, so see if you can figure up what uh, f7 is. Um, using 8 bits. Take a minute and see if you can do it. Alright, I'll do it as well. Um, so the first thing we have to do is we have to take F, uh, which is 15, uh, and multiply it by 16, uh, and then we have to take 7 and multiply it by 16 to the zeroth power. So it's 15 times 16, which is 240, plus 7, which is 247, right? Um, Hopefully you know that this is incorrect. Um, you might think it's correct, but it is actually incorrect. Um, so just kind of doing it that way, um, that's wrong. The reason it's wrong is this, is you kind of have to think about it as going via binary. Um, so going via binary, uh, this number is really, um, you know, this in binary. Um, and you can see that if we're using eight bits, then the most significant bit is a one, uh, which means that this is a negative number. Um, so we know how to do negative numbers. We start at the back, we look for the one, uh, we flip the rest, um, and we can see that this is um, really the number negative nine. Uh, so if we wanted to convert this number uh, to decimal, um, the answer is negative nine. So I know that's kind of surprising for some people, uh, but the trick is you have to know what the most significant bit is. If it's a one, it's a negative, and you have to do the two's complement thing. So that's if it's an eight bit number. Um, if it was a 16 bit number, uh, then what is the value? Um, so then this number, if you were to write the whole thing, it looks like this. Um, and in this case, you can see that the most significant bit is a zero, because we've got 16 bits now. Um, and so now it really is whatever that was, 247, I think was what it was. Um, and so you've got to know how many bits you're using to be able to use two's complement. Said that plenty now. Uh, hopefully you get the idea. Uh, so moral of the story is simple. Um, if you ever want to go from hex to des, uh, you have to go via binary if it's a negative. Um, and the same way if you're going back, you have to kind of go via binary. So you can hopefully see that hex is really just shorthand binary, and that's the way I think of hex. All right, uh, that's it for this time. Next time we're going to look at a couple uh, little overflow issues. See you then.